Look, it's at the store the other day. Um, I forgot what I was buying. Oh, I was when I was buying that um, case that I that I bought that 300 volt power supply, 300 volt pulser, I guess it was. Um, I found this uh, for ten dollars, and I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at, and it might be it might be useful. Um, let's go ahead and take it out of the box. Staple shut. So uh, this is a uh, I guess you call it an adapter converter. Yeah, 75 ohms to 50 ohms. So a lot of times you'll want to measure a 75 ohm system, but you have a 50 ohm measurement tool, right? So you will say you want to measure some um, you know filter that has to do with a 75 ohm television or something like that. And, uh, but you want to measure it with a 50 ohm, you know, spectrum analyzer or uh, a VNA or something like that. So uh, I think I know what's inside here, um, but it has an F connector on one side and a SMA on the other side and a nice little uh, Pomona box. Um, Wideband Engineering Company Incorporated, Phoenix, Arizona. The model number A65U slash HL. Not, not sure what kind of frequency range it would operate off of. It's on a bracket, so obviously it was inside some type of instrument and somebody removed it. So uh, I don't really want the bracket anymore, so let's take that off. Whoa. How's that for a long screw? <laughs> A little bit overkill there. It's probably what they had on hand. I seriously doubt this is affecting any part of its behavior. Oh, well, that's interesting. They actually milled, milled the surface here to make this go flat. Usually it has a crinkle paint coating and they actually went ahead and milled it. Maybe to get a good ground contact or something, but uh, it might have been milled or might have just been put on a uh, belt sander or something, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Why don't we go ahead and measure it, see if it measures 75 and 50. That would be fun. All right, let's uh, measure this side here. And he is measuring zero ohms. What am I shorting out? Must be shorting something out. Huh, zero ohms. Well, that's pretty weird. And on this side, we are measuring nothing. I might not be reaching far inside there. Let me uh, poke a piece of metal in there so I can make electrical contact to it. Oops. Yeah, measuring, measuring nothing on this side. So, uh, something's weird inside, so maybe that's why it was in the ten dollar range. I don't know. Let's open this thing up and see uh, see what it's inside. And I expected just to see a, a pad, a uh, seventy five fifty pad in here. But uh, yeah, let's open it up. Hmm. All right. Ah, it's fancier inside than I thought. Well, okay. So it's got a. Uh, Capacitively coupled output, so that's why we weren't measuring any ohms on the output in 75. And uh, it's got spray paint in there, like a some type of yeah. And it's got a little uh, it's got a little transformer, so that's why we just weren't able to measure easily 50 ohms and 75 ohms. If we put this on a VNA, maybe we'll be able to see that. So I think we'll give that a try. See if we see a 50 ohm over here, and see if we see a 75 over there with a VNA. And uh, yeah, it's got a little, uh, I know it's really, really hard to see. Um, but uh, let me get a thing to point with here. Um, there's a capacitor down here, right there. Uh, there's a resistor here to ground, and then there's a little, uh, transformer here, like a little pig nose transformer uh, that does the uh, impedance matching. So you call this a balan, um, balanced, unbalanced, or they're both balanced. It's balanced in, balanced out. So 
or unbalanced. It's actually unbalanced, unbalanced, I guess. Anyway, it's just a little transformer just to change the impedance. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, not exactly what I expected. So I'll go ahead and put the, uh, put the box back together and we'll go measure on the VNA and see if we can't see a 75 ohm spot and a 50 ohm spot and maybe what kind of frequency range it has. Okay, so we have the uh, VNA uh, calibrated. We're getting a nice little spot right there at 50 ohms. And uh, we will connect our converter box. I'll get up to the uh, 50 ohm side. And uh, it's basically giving us an open. So it's expecting a load on the other side. It's expecting a 75 ohm load on the other side which I don't have in an official SMA, but, oh, sorry, by, by reach. Let's go ahead and 75, 75 ohms. Do I have any 75 ohm resistors? I'm not sure. Um, let me go ahead and put a 50 ohm load on the output. I know this is gonna be really wacky, uh, but let me put a 50 ohm load in that, yeah. It's giving us a circle around 50. Okay, let's turn, let's turn it around the other way because this should be more valid. We'll put a 50 ohm load on the 50 ohm side of our box. And then we'll look into the 75 ohm and we should see uh, a 75 ohm spot. And we are, there's 75 and then it's got a little bit of squiggly on it and some other things on it and stuff. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in on that a bit. Uh, and let's change the frequency range because this thing obviously is, uh, we'll do a stop frequency of let's say 500 megahertz and a start frequency of let's say 100 megahertz. And there we go. We're getting like a little spot there right around 70 something or other. Um, let me turn the marker on. Now we're right there about 72 ohms. So yeah, so it's working good in, in this direction, okay? Um, and so let's turn it around and see if I can find a 75 ohm resistor to put on there. Okay, so let me remove that 50 ohm load and uh, put a 75 ohm resistor on this thing. It's just a quarter watt resistor. I'm just gonna hand hold it in there. It's not gonna be RF. It's not gonna be a, a nice RF type of thing, but it'll give, us, it'll give us an idea whether this thing is working or not. And uh, yeah, I need to hold it on there. And there we go. So. We're getting a nice spot right there at 50 ohms. Let me move my scale back out so you, so I'll put a scale of one. Um, yeah, so we're right around 50 ohms. And uh, depending on how I hold the, how I hold the resistor on there, there we go, nice 50 ohm. Nice 50 ohm spot. So yeah, it does convert. And uh, it is converting over some frequency range. Let me, let me turn it around the other way because that was easy for me to do. And then we'll take a look at the frequency range of which this thing is operating over. And I can make a note on the box what it's, what it's capable of. All right. And there we go. All right, we had a nice spot there. Let's do a frequency Let's do a frequency start of, let's say 10 megahertz. It seems to be fine down there. Let's try start of one megahertz, seems to be fine there. And then let's do a stop frequency of one gigahertz. And then it's moving down a bit as you see there. So you can zoom in on, oops, zoom in that on that a bit. So, I mean, it's still not too bad, right? Um, so yeah, this box is pretty good from, I would say, 
a megahertz to gigahertz as a rough uh, a rough converter. So it might come in handy someday. I don't know. I thought it would be interesting, and it was. All right, so I think uh, this device is going to be something like this. The 50 ohm comes in, um, and there's a transformer that then converts that to a 75 ohm. So there's a, a ratio of turns on a, uh, on a transformer, and then the output is uh, capacitively coupled. Um, and we get 75 looking in that away, and we get 50 ohms looking in that away. So, yeah, that was a, uh, a WBE Model A65.